Look, I'm not biased towards AORs or anything. It's not my fault that they made some of the best budget boards of the current CPU generation. And it looks like they're about to do it again with the upcoming X670 AORs Elite AX. Or should I just call it the AORs Elite? The AX part is kind of redundant now that pretty much every single motherboard in the X670 lineup for most companies is going to include both Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. So that's already a pretty nice improvement over the last generation right there, but there's so much more. Starting with CPU power, Aorus have provided us with 16 plus 2 plus 2 phases. With those 16 phases going to the CPU, all of that while giving you two full 8 pins to power the CPU with. That is a lot of clean power going to the CPU, and again, may I remind you, this is in the most budget board in the entire Aorus lineup. So yeah, things are only going to get more insane from here. And clearly Aorus have found that 16 phases being dedicated to CPU is more than enough, seeing how they keep that exact amount even in the X670E Aorus Master. In fact, you have to go all the way to the extreme board, aka the best and most expensive SKU, just to get more than 16 phases. So clearly if it's good enough for those kind of boards, it's good enough for this one. When it comes to PCI expansion, things are pretty simple with three 16x PCIe slots. Though it looks like Aorus continue to neglect the forgotten child that is the 1x slot. But I know what people will be saying. But Arana, you can just put a 1x card in a 16x slot, so what's the deal with just more options? Well, I'll tell you what the deal is. Number one, we can all agree that a 1x card in a 1x slot looks better than a 1x card in a 16x slot. And number two, I don't think we should be showing appeasement to the kind of psychopaths that are going to put two most likely very hot 16x cards so close to each other. And good luck finding a lot of 16x expansion cards that are one slot nowadays anyway. Anyway, but whatever, when it comes to PCIe, you also have 4 M.2 slots with one running at PCIe Gen 5 speed, and the same is true of the top 16x slot. Wait a second, none of the 16x slots are PCIe Gen 5. Aorus? Gigabyte? Whoever? Are you serious right now? Like, I'm not even joking, this is actually a pretty big deal, and for many, it could be the reason why they won't go for this motherboard. <sighs> Whew. Okay, I think it calmed down enough. Now let's talk about rear I.O. And Gigabyte's rear I.O. has always brought me joy in this dark and impressive world, because they have always included way more USB Type A ports than anywhere else. And this tradition continues, seeing how this board has, count them, 12. 12! USB Type A ports, with just four of them being USB Gen 2. Aorus are literally just competing with themselves at this point, because no other company even have near that amount. In fact, this board has so much USB Type A, it not only beats out the competition, but also other motherboards in Gigabyte's own lineup. Yeah, this thing has actually more USB Type A ports than some other more expensive models in the entire Aorus product stack. So yeah, that is a very, very confusing victory, but a victory for Euros here nonetheless. On top of that, you have 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, you also have one HDMI 2.0 port, but there is no display port. So there's weird people who still think that display port is somehow superior to HDMI are gonna have a rough day with this motherboard. I should probably stop talking before I get car bombed by a display port fan. And something that Euros haven't fixed since the previous generation boards is the fact that it's still only three audio jacks and that's it. I think we all collectively agreed as an industry back in like 2005 that 5 audio jacks plus spitif is the standard, so whatever. But anyway, I guess final verdict time. Uh, let's go with... It's complicated. As always, the Elite has a lot going for it, especially for its price, which granted we don't know yet, seeing how the Step Up Pro board is going to be around $300, we can expect that this one is going to be somewhere between $200 and $250, which is coincidentally how much you'll be already paying for a Z690 Aeros Elite. But keep in mind that that board has already been out for quite a few months. It does so many things right, but so many bad habits from Aorus are also still here. The lack of a PC 1X slot, the lack of a PC Gen 5 16X slot, the lack of 5 audio jacks and spinoff at the back, the lack of display port for integrated graphics. It truly feels like a betrayal, because when I went into this, I actually thought that I'm going to buy this X670 Aorus Elite as a replacement for my X570 Aorus Elite, which I daily drive right now. But instead, I think I will have to look for something else, because some of the things, like the lack of the PC Gen 5 slot, is just too much to handle. I know, first world problems. But still, you get my point. 
But let me know what you think of this board down in the comments below and what boards I should be doing overviews of next. But if you found this video helpful in any degree and you want to see us make more awesome videos like this one in the future, then the best way to support the channel to ensure that that will happen is via our Patreon down in the video description below. I'd also like to thank my existing patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, Justin Rage, Ella Ronyak, OKB, Max Sumner, Shane Warcraft, Lansby and Jesse Herbman. Thank you guys so, so much, support truly goes a long way. Down there you can find our merch store, our Discord server and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's all it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.